guys, it's Zoe Daphne. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a traveling cellist based in New York City who loves to find adventure one song at a time. If you love music and travel, please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Now let's get into it. This is your complete guide to seeing an opera, specifically at the Metropolitan Opera in New York City, but these tips can be applied to any opera company. We'll go over every step of the way from how to pick your seats to where to eat beforehand. But before that, you might be wondering why you should see an opera in the first place. Maybe you've heard it's stuffy and boring, which is why I want to take the time to debunk three common opera misconceptions before we get to the rest of the video. If you're already sure you want to see an opera, skip to this timestamp, otherwise let me convince you. Myth number one is that opera is outdated. To that I say, there's a reason why people still celebrate this art form today. Although the stories were written hundreds of years ago, the themes still prevail, which is what makes them timeless. We might have phones and internet now, but we still experience love, passion, and sorrow. I would even go so far to say that the old-fashioned settings make it incredibly romantic. For example, in La Boheme, the main character meets her love interest because her candle has gone out and she needs a match. I mean, how romantic. That would never happen nowadays. Myth number two is that opera is hard to understand. Granted, most operas aren't in English, but even if you don't know Italian or French, you can still enjoy it. Most opera companies nowadays offer subtitles. At the Metropolitan Opera, those appear on a little screen in the seat in front of you. It's really intuitive. Think of it like watching a movie with subtitles. Myth number three is that it's stuffy and boring. This couldn't be further from the truth. Of course it depends which opera you see, but most of the time there's a break every 45 minutes where the curtains go down and there's a set change. During this time, people will chat as they wait for the next scene and be silent again when the curtain rises. Even during the performance, people will laugh at jokes or cry at the misfortune of the characters. I can't speak for all opera companies, but the Met does an amazing job of giving nice, frequent, long intermissions and breaks. So now that you're convinced, let's talk about choosing which opera to see. I've talked to several of my opera singer friends, and the general consensus is that you can't go wrong with the classics. La Boheme, The Magic Flute, La Traviata, and Carmen to name a few. Of course there are so many other great operas to choose from, but I think the most important thing is the length of the opera. I don't think a beginner should go see a Wagner opera that's like six hours long. If it's your first time, I personally wouldn't pick anything over three hours long. Bonus tip, whichever opera you choose, you should really read the summary beforehand. I would do this while you're researching the opera, kind of like how you would watch a trailer while deciding to pick a movie. It'll help you keep track of the story and make sure you're actually interested in the subject matter. Next up is where to sit. Tickets at the Met start at $35 for student and rush tickets and can go all the way to over $200. My general rule of thumb is to sit as close to the center as I possibly can. As for how close or how far, these halls are designed to have good acoustics no matter where you're sitting. I've sat both in the very front of the balcony section and the very back and the acoustics are great. As for actually being able to see the stage, I highly recommend bringing some opera glasses. These were $25 on Amazon and shout out to my opera singer friend for pointing out to me that they sell the exact same brand at the Met for $65. So with these, you'll be able to see up-close facial expressions no matter where you're sitting. And lastly, where to eat. There are so many yummy options nearby. If you're looking for an upscale, convenient option, Cafe Fiorello is right across the street from the Met. You can't go wrong, the food is good and it feels classy, but my personal favorite, and I'm almost afraid to share this because it's my hidden gem, is Il Violino. Best calamari I've ever had, and trust me, I've tried calamari all over the city. It's music themed, the food is delicious, the service is amazing, I can't praise this restaurant enough. You have to try it if you're around the area. And finally, it's time to see the opera. I highly recommend getting there at least an hour early so you can relax and enjoy the Met Opera before the show. Definitely check out the gift shop. There are so many unique music themed things here. I'm a hair away from buying all these ornaments and decorating a musical Christmas tree. Who knew there could be so many music themed items in one place? This is definitely the opera teacher section. I swear, they all dress like this. I'm not usually a gift shop person, but I'm so glad this gal right here dragged me in because there were so many unique items. 
I couldn't resist buying some goodies. But my favorite part of the Met are these beautiful chandeliers. They were gifted by the Austrian government as a thank you for the United States pledging to help the economy after World War II. The Met Opera Shop actually sells replicas of these lights from $19,000 to $83,000. I don't think I can buy that on a musician's salary, so I'll just admire from afar for now. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, but if you're enjoying this video so far, please like and subscribe to support this channel and let me know I should make more videos like this. Now let's get back into it. Don't forget to head downstairs and see the Wall of Fame. Here you'll find 1,024 photographs of Met Opera stars. As the New York Times perfectly says, singers predominate. How could they not? But maestros, dancers, directors, designers, and a sprinkling of top administrators claim places too. It's finally time for the show. I love watching the chandeliers rise as we get ready to immerse ourselves in the story. We saw La Boheme and I was already crying by the first act. It's just so beautiful how people hundreds of years ago and now are connected by human emotion. I'm almost certain that by the time curtain call rolls around, you'll shed a tear or two. I really hope this inspires you to add the Metropolitan Opera to your New York City bucket list. Even if you're not planning on visiting New York City, there are so many amazing opera companies around the world. It's an experience worth having. And it's not as intimidating as you might believe. I'm really curious, have you seen an opera before? If so, comment below and let me know which one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you have a great rest of your week, and Cello Z and I will see you in the next video.